After hundreds of years of struggle, we obtained one law for all. And now we are getting uh, in the past and not in the future with what is happening in France, in, in England, in Germany, everywhere. Why did we make the choice of separating public affairs and religious ones? Why? Do we think it was important or not? don't have the financial power that comes from generations of wealth and collecting plates and tax breaks and we don't have the influence that comes from threats of hell and promises of paradise but we do have each other and our joint determination to make a better world the state should not give any faith special status or special rights and here in Britain we have a major problem. Not only are one third of our schools faith schools, which are religiously divisive, but the current government plans to extend and expand faith schools and other free schools, which will not be under the same universal principles as the sole state sector. We also have a problem because nearly all of our quality laws have special exemptions for religious organizations. Not just places of worship, but faith-run schools, hospitals, nursing homes, and so on. The principle of a democracy surely must be that we are all equal before the law. I'm going to talk to you personally. I, I could go on an awful lot about the hellhole which is called the Vatican, that narcissistic, tyrannical regime that has allowed abuse to happen. It's not the abuse itself that's the problem. It is the regime, the tyrannical regime, that allows it, that creates a culture where not only is sexual abuse of children a possibility, but it's almost an inevitability because of the narcissism, the deus, you know, the demigods which are the priests, the priest on a pedestal association and the ignorance of people and preference to not look at what this is. Of course, in a secular society, people who are religious or not have a right to believe in what they want. But don't forget, religion in the state, in the educational system, in the judicial system has nothing to do with belief. It has to do with political power. And therefore... 
And therefore, this is first and foremost a battle against religion in political power. Let's be frank. Let's be frank. I'm not talking about the church taxes levied by governments willy-nilly uh, from church members on pain of expulsion from their churches. In Germany, again, such taxes meet 80% of church costs. In Spain, the Catholic Church receives well over 100 million euros a year in church taxes. I'm talking instead about straight gifts of taxpayers' money to the churches. The Danish government hands over about 100 million euros a year. The Evangelical Lutheran Church of Finland gets a fixed share of corporation tax that's worth another 100 million euros a year. In France, the churches that are built before 1905 are owned and maintained by the state at a similar cost, and local authorities provide housing for priests at a cost of about 54 million euros a year. In Romania, the government spends more on building new churches than it does on building new schools and hospitals. The power of the Vatican is so large that even in this time of financial crisis, Almost no Italian politician, except for our friends, the radicals, uh, voted against their economic privileges. Actually, nobody knows how much money they get every year. We are trying now to understand, uh, and uh, the lowest boundary that we found out is 4, mil uh, 4 billion euros per year. And you, in England, in London, you have a splendid opportunity next year with the Olympics. Why the Olympics? What has this to do with secularism? You have to know that in Olympics you have one law. You here have invented modern sport. And the characteristic of modern sport is one law. In this case it is the Olympic Charter. In the Olympic Charter you have Rule 51, which excludes any religious propaganda. However, you will have the demonstration of segregation against women through the presence of Saudi Arabia who even forbids sport for women. You will have the example of segregation against women through the example of Iran who is sending completely veiled women and this is completely in contradiction with Rule 51. I forgot to tell you the most important thing that we're going to do, and I hope that this will you know, be important to you as well. Uh, we have decided to name the last Saturday of October International Survivors Day for Catholic Clergy Abuse. And we will be partying in Rome, in front of the Vatican. <laughs> despite them, not because of them. So if you can possibly make it, you, the, we will party. Your party people, come to Rome and party with us. This campaign started initially as against the Vatican. It was specifically against the Vatican. It was no Vatican longer for a secular Europe because the Vatican is really a vocal, successful at secular sports in Europe. But then this campaign has evolved because of course we've got a problem with Sharia law and all other religious institutions that want to impose doctrine on people. And so we want to reaffirm that human rights come first. And it's very important that Europe remains secular, that institutions are secular, and that also the member countries are truly secular. The UK, uh, for the population, for the mentality of people, is fairly secular, but we still got bishops, not, not elected, unelected in the House of Lords. And um, the head of the state is also the head of the church, and many other contradictions. And gay uh, um, rights, we've got something, but there is no marriage equality, for example. Women's rights are under attack. We've seen it recently. Uh, the right to an abortion is always uh, under discussion. And Italy has got even worse problems. And uh, countries like Spain, Malta, just recently managed to approve a, lay, a, a law for divorce. And the Catholic Church, the Vatican, was opposing it, was to, to impose in a totalitarian way their doctrine on everyone. So it's very important to do these demonstrations and to uh, be active.